Hi. So this video is the pilot of a new series I'm going to start under the Technically Tech series. This series is about various ways to obtain and work with GCC in the Windows platform. Now, what is GCC? Well, uh, the GCC is the GNU Compiler Collection. GCC. Uh, this is the official site of the GCC. Uh, you probably wouldn't find much information there. So let's go to Wikipedia, not the Gulf Cooperation Council. Ah, the GNU Compiler Collection. There it is. The GNU Compiler Collection, as you can understand by the name, is a collection of compilers. A collection of compilers of many popular languages, including C, C++, and Fortran, and other languages, but most of them probably you are not familiar with, so I'll not talk about them. I am interested in mostly these three languages. So, um, the GCC contains compilers for these three languages. The C compiler is called GCC itself, because when GCC was, you know, created, it was originally called the GNU C compiler. It is under the GNU project. You can read more about the GNU project either in uh, Wikipedia or, you know, here uh, under the name of GNU project. I'll not go into that. Then there is the G++ compiler, which is essentially uh, the C++ compiler. And then there is the Fortran compiler known as G Fortran. Uh, I'm sure some of these names ring bells to you. Now all of these are great ways to work with these three languages and they are very, the GCC is a very popular package. Many people use it. I personally use it for Fortran programming. So I believe that this is a very um, important thing for many to obtain. But then uh, why this series? The series is because uh, the GCC is originally, you know, well integrated with Linux systems. It's not very um, conveniently available on Windows. There are ways to obtain it on Windows, I mean, as, as standalone packages. Um, and I'll obviously talk about them. So this series is going to be about, you know, is going to be divided into smaller parts. Each part is going to talk about a way to obtain the GCC, obtain and work with the GCC on Windows platforms. That is, you do not have to install Linux to get GCC working because uh, to personally to me, uh, just for using GCC, installing Linux seems like an overkill. Or even um, there, the other way, like, installing a virtual box or a VM and then installing Linux on it and then working with it while it slows down your computer and crashes it. No. So we are going to avoid installing Linux. We are going to avoid installing Linux on a virtual machine. So I have some ideas about what to tell you, uh, what to do videos on, and I'll keep adding ideas in the future. So this is going to be a hopefully a never-ending series whenever I get some new ideas uh, and more innovative ideas I'm going to add them to this roster and you can just you know save this playlist and um, refer back to it whenever you want so who this is for well this is for me personally of course because I am myself one of the target audience so who am I I am the novice programmer who is just learning to code in C, C++ or Fortran. Um, I am the little advanced programmer who knows how to code, but then again, uh, I do need the compilers and stuff, a good environment to, you know, get all my files running properly, organize them and stuff. I can also be a quite an advanced programmer, uh, though I as you become a more advanced programmer, you probably already know advanced methods to obtain these compilers and you wouldn't really need to refer to my videos. The primary requirement is that you need to know how to code. I mean, 
if you do not know how to code or if you are not about to learn how to code, why would you be looking for compilers anyway? So this is not a programming tutorial. This is a tutorial on how to uh, get the GCC to help you with programming, right? Because the GCC, as I said, is a very popular set of compilers. So you'll probably be using it. Someone will probably recommend it to you and it's good, okay, it's good. There are other compilers out there, but if you're using the GCC, this is the video for you. Or rather, this, this set of videos are for you. What else? Okay, so what am I going to do? Uh, with each method that I talk about, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of each method. Like, uh, what extra do you get with that method? You'll see that with some methods, you can actually get a Linux-like environment without actually installing Linux. Uh, that can be very useful. But there will also be downsides to each method and I'll talk about them because uh, they will be quite important because I don't want to uh, leave you in a mess in which uh, I give you a method which is quite complicated and I don't tell you everything about it and then you are just confused and you say, hey, what the, what is he guiding us at? Huh? Anyway, so yeah, so I'm going to talk about the pros and cons. And well, I'm also going to talk about how uh, each method can, uh, with its own pros, help you achieve your programming needs better. Some of these methods are going to have their own set of cool features that are going to complement your programming, and I'm going to talk about them as well. So there will be extra bytes and stuff. This is not going to be all about GCC. Usually my videos have some, uh, at least that's my idea. My videos have some extra ideas about uh, each concept I talk about. So that's going to be a constant. Well, that's all about the pilot. I don't want to make this too long. I have a habit of making long videos. See you sometime in the future. Keep following my channel. That's all I can say. Signing off.